In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a multilingual model driven app in Microsoft Power Apps. Now, I have a sample model driven app implemented over here. Now, it is basically a grid showing the uh, listing of a table. And if I go inside it, I'll be able to see the form control. Now, as you see over here, this is currently in English language. Now, what I can do, I can put this model driven app in different languages. Now for that, first I need to understand what are the different languages which are supported for my environment. So first thing what you need to do, you need to go into the environment using Power Platform Admin Center, select your environment and <clears throat> go to settings and then under settings under product, select languages. Now that will take you to the old interface and here you will see a couple of items which are ticked like French and there's none other than which is selected because English is by default I have installed my tenant on. Now I can see that there is a French language which is enabled and this is a version number. So that means I can render the model driven app for an environment in French language as well. However, if I want to have more language like say Czech or Danish or Dutch within my environment, I just need to select it and click on apply. The moment you do that, it will tell you this uh, pop up that uh, you have selected three languages. The operation will enable or disable the selected languages and it might take several minutes for it to enable. So it won't be instantaneous. So I'm just enabling this three languages, three more languages within this tenant. And once that is done, I'll be able to utilize those languages. Now let's leave it there. Let me go show you uh, the model driven app over here. Now in the model driven app, I first told you that this is already enabled for French language. Now, if I want to see how uh, to see this entire application in French language, I can go into settings and I can go into personalization settings. Now remember personalization settings only applies to you and no other user. So once you are in this tab, just select languages. And then from here, you can select English and French. Okay, now by default it is English because that's your base language. But if I want the user interface to be in French and help to be in French, or maybe help in English and user interface in French, I can do that. But let's put everything in French. I'll click on okay. And the moment you do that, your entire model driven app refreshes. And then on the left hand side, if you see the table name, like this was contact, this was accounts and this was contacts. Now it has been converted into French. Now on the left hand side here, you will also see that uh, the left menu, this entire part is converted into French. The command bar is converted into French and the buttons and all those things. Now, but what we have seen over here, everything is converted into French except for the column names which you have created, you know, you have added as a custom con uh, column, right? Like the hospital name, location, capacity, emergency services. Now, we are not able to convert that into French. Now, why? Because anything which is being already established by the Power Platform environment, it will be able to convert that into French. But these all things are custom components which you have added or custom columns which you have added. So you need to manually convert that into French. Now, in order to do that, there are a couple of options. Now, what we need to do is first is uh, go into the backend, create a solution, add that table. I have already created one solution called as HMS and I've added that table hospitals in Australia. If I click on overview, I see an option called as translation. So I can import or export the translation. So the first step is to export the translation. So I'll just export the translation and I take that translation file and then I add the equivalent French content in it and then export it, uh, import it back. So I can see there is a zip file. I'll just open this file and show it to you. So this is how the zip file content looks like. It has content type.xml and CRM translation.xml. If I open XML, then I see a whole bunch of gibberish XML. I'll just do a right click and format the document so that it is in a readable form. And now here, remember for English, the language code is 1033 and for French is 1036. So just to find out 
whether it is putting in correct way. So if you say 1033, so this is 1033 is for English language and 1036 is for French. So that means for every item which you see over here, you need to manually go there and then make that change in French. Okay. So remember, if you have so many component or so many columns, it will be very difficult to operate on this XML file. Right. So this is not a preferred approach. However, if you get hold of this, then you can just go ahead, make the changes. And then once you're ready with this entire uh, translation, then what you can do again, import this translation back using translation import. And then once you do that, then the target would be achieved. Like you will be able to see hospital ID, owner, hospital name, all these fields in equivalent French once you, once you change the language. Now, that's about using XML to do that manual translation. But there is an, another tool which is available in XRM toolbox called as Easy Translator, which I'm going to cover it in a separate video. But just to show you, it's, it's easy. Now, what you need to do, you need to just load the entity. So the entity name is Hospitals in Australia. Once I select this, then I can select various global options. Now, for me, uh, the translation for that entity is important. So I may select that and then I will just do an, uh, like say, I'll just click on export translation. Then what it will do, it will basically uh, give a translated file in Excel uh, doc. Okay. So I'll just type in some value and then uh, it will export that file uh, in uh, Excel format. Now it is still uh, exporting it, but then once it is exported, then I should be able to see an Excel file. So this is how you can use uh, uh, Easy Translator to translate that equivalent tokens in different languages. Now, remember, if you have more than one languages, then it will be too much of a task, right? So, so you need to make sure that you uh, uh, do that correct translation. And now I've opened this Excel file. This is how the Excel file will look like. So. If you see this, there is an entities, there is an attribute relationship and there's so many uh, tabs. If I go to attributes and if I just pick up, say, one attribute, say hospital ID or hospital name. Now, if you want to change this hospital name, what you can do, it's simple. Uh, you see in the column 1033. Now, this is an equivalent for English. But if you see 1036, this is equivalent for French. So you just need to type in what is the equivalent hospital name in French. OK, and then you just type in whatever is there and then import this file back into the system so this is how easy it is to translate so what we have seen like if you want to convert into different languages uh, for a model driven app it's a personalization settings you go to personalization settings and then select the appropriate languages by clicking on languages now here i will again revert back to english i click on ok and then this model driven app will be loaded in english language now, if you go into advanced setting from here, now we're going to personalization setting, but if I go to advanced settings from here, then under administration, if I go into languages from here, also, I will be able to add multiple languages for my application. Now, you remember when you go into Power Platform Admin Center, we have selected like three different languages. We have enabled it. Now that same changes you can do from this interface as well so once screen loads it will list down all the languages which are supported from your tenant perspective and then you can pick and choose now remember if you select something it will add and if the item is already selected you remove it uh, so you unselect it just by clicking on that checkbox and then it will uh, disable that particular language from the application so this is also one of the way through which you can navigate now, uh, I have already started this language settings enablement. Now, as you see over here, it is taking a quite a while because it's going to install the language pack in the server. And that's why it is taking a uh, longer time. So if you want to uh, enable the language, make sure that you have sufficient time for enablement and then testing the application. So that's it for this is how you basically use multiple languages in your model driven app. Thanks for watching.